Okay, so what we have on the bench today is a Crown IC150 preamplifier. This preamplifier has a couple of problems with it. And uh, I've uh, already troubleshot it. But I think that this is uh, all worth going over. Okay, so looking at this Crown preamplifier, what we've got is the signal coming out of the uh, uh, single stage op amp here, going through this uh, 25 microfarad capacitor, goes through this 560 ohm resistor, there's a variable inductor, and then it would go to the main outputs. Um, there's a mute circuit here, and this mute circuit, this relay is shown in the energized position. So right now, you'll notice that this line that comes from where the output signal runs through, it goes nowhere. But if this relay de-energizes, what happens is this switch goes up here and the signal gets dragged off to ground. So, uh, most people don't want a mute circuit on their preamplifier. This was originally built, I'm pretty sure, for radio station use. And you could use this external mute connection. If you connected that to ground, it didn't mute it. But if you opened up that connection, then it did mute it. So we should be able to trace this signal quite easily uh, and find out where it's dying. Because right now we have no output here on this preamplifier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Carlson Ultra Probe and we're going to watch the signal through this 25 microfarad capacitor, through the 560 ohm resistor, through the inductor to the output and see where that signal is dying. My guess is that it's dying uh, at the relay and that the relay is not energized and that this signal is getting dragged off to ground. So we'll go take a look at it. Okay, so let's take a look through this thing. And we'll take a look with the uh, Carlson uh, Ultra Probe here. And uh, if you don't know what a Carlson Ultra Probe is, please uh, join Mr. Carlson's Patreon. Uh, it's only, gee, you guys, it's very reasonably priced. It's less than a cup of coffee. And so... Uh, you know, there's all kinds of, uh, he's got great inventions. This is one of them that I built. And uh, join his Patreon, it's worth it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this incoming signal over here. And we're going to start tracing and it's 400 hertz. And you can see that we have it at the selector switch. So the signal is present there. Then we're going to go up. We're going to take a look where we were looking on the schematic at these uh 25 microfarad capacitors and look nice and strong because the volume has been turned up and it's over here too then we'll take a look at these 560 ohm resistors look at that we've got signal on those too then we'll take a look at these inductors uh oh look at that the output inductor has no signal on it Oh, and there's no signal on the relay. So here we are. This relay right here is dragging all of that signal to ground. And we know from the schematic that if that relay were energized, that we'd be seeing signal right here. But because the relay is not energized, more than likely because either this transistor is bad or this JFET up here is bad. One of the two, and by the way, it's not this transistor, it's the JFET. So now when we go to the output, we have nothing. The output's just plain dead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this relay as a plug-in relay and we can remove it. So let's remove it and then we'll take a look back here and see what that accomplishes. Okay, we're back here. Now the relay has been removed. We'll take a look here. We got signal right down here at the switch. We've got signal on these two 25 microfarad capacitors. Lots of signal on the resistors. 
Oh, look at that. We've got signals on the inductors. And if we come and look at the outputs, look at this. We've got signal at the main outputs, too. There it is. So, uh, that relay, apparently, <laughs> right down here is the relay. That relay is where signals go to die. Now, that relay was originally put in here to allow muting of this preamplifier. And my guess is, is that the reason for that was because this preamplifier, they usually use these in radio stations, and a guy could hit a foot switch and open up this connection back here, and that would uh, relax that relay, and therefore running this output signal to ground. Well, my customer doesn't really want this to be mutable, uh, to be able to mute this uh, uh, preamplifier. And moreover, if you make it that way again, then what you'll be waiting for is either that JFET or that transistor to go bad again, and then before you know it, uh, you're out signal again. So I'm going to just pull that relay out of here. And uh, so that's going to be how this uh, how this proceeds. But I just thought that you might take a look and how that troubleshooting was done with the ultra probe. Signal here, signal on the ICs, signal on the 25 microfarad capacitors, signal on the 560 ohm resistors, signal on the inductors, and signal to the output. So, uh, we're all squared away here. Now, the last thing that was done here was two of these dual gain potentiometers were replaced. So after I started putting signal to it with the output working the way it was, I moved the base control and one side of the amplifier went into oscillation. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's got a bad capacitor in there. But before I ran out and started just replacing capacitors for fun, I thought maybe I had to take some measurements of the potentiometers. And there's a base potentiometer that goes right here. That potentiometer is right here. This is a very unusual potentiometer by today's standards because it allows you to adjust the base on the right and the left channel separately. It's got one shaft that goes down the middle of it. That shaft that goes down the middle of it is one channel. In this particular case, it's the right channel. Then it's got this collar on the outside that's a second shaft that goes to the second potentiometer. This is a dual ganged potentiometer. There are two potentiometers here. And so you can adjust the base uh, on each channel separately. But again, my customer does not have a need to do that. He would uh, prefer that the uh, when you turn that potentiometer that you adjust both channels at the same time and that they stay even. And I've got to agree with him because I've got a Dynaco Pad 4 that has the same setup and it, I never find a need to adjust the base higher in the right channel than the left or the left channel than the right. So it's kind of a, a in a way, it's not a very useful function. What I found out when I measured this potentiometer was that it was open and the other potentiometer was starting to go bad out of this two double stacked ones. Uh, the other potentiometer had a lot of noise and one channel was completely open. So I want to take a real close look here. It's a bit hard to see, but this is the only place where there's carbon on that track. All the rest of the carbon track is worn off of this potentiometer. So this potentiometer needs to be completely replaced. And unfortunately, the only potentiometer that can replace this potentiometer, there's a Borns one out there that isn't even available in the United States. They had two of them over in Bulgaria, and I wasn't really interested in, uh, in ordering those from Bulgaria. So what I did instead was these are each 100k potentiometers and 
So are the treble. So is the treble potentiometer, which is right here. So the treble potentiometer is also open. The base potentiometer is open. And what I did was I ordered two dual gang potentiometers that operate off of a single shaft. And instead of having two knobs on there, like this, it'll just have one knob, and that knob will change uh, change both both channels evenly at the same time. So that's where I'm at with this preamplifier net right now, and uh, I will uh, continue as soon as I receive that uh, part, those two parts, the two potentiometers. We'll wire them in here and see if we get this thing working just perfect. So here are our new potentiometers, these two, the treble and the bass. And uh, they had to be modified because the uh, new potentiometers don't have the same size shaft as the old ones, so I had to whittle the shafts down on them. And uh, that was done with the Dremel tool and circles. But let's take a look up here at the oscilloscope. And here's the bass boost. And here's the base cut. Base boost. And there's about flat. There's what the flat knob pushed. So the base one works real good. Okay, so here's the treble. There's the boost. Here's the cut. And that's at 10,000 hertz. So that control is also working real good. We set it towards the center and then we press the flat button. And it's pretty close. So boost, cut on the treble. So the two potentiometers, they're working real good. So the replacement of those two went well. And uh, like we were saying before, the original ones, the carbon tracks were worn all just straight off of them. There's no carbon left around here. Carbon was worn off of that, so unfortunately. So that's uh, we're getting pretty close. The only thing that we have left to do here is replace the pilot lamp, and uh, we're out.